uh, uh, this next gentleman, as uh, uh, Dan mentioned, he won our contest uh, that we have in the summer, uh, and uh, he's fantastic. Uh, that was, uh, uh, so now he's been a year since he turned from amateur comedian to professional comedian, and uh, uh, what that means is he's ramped up the alcoholism quite a bit, <laughs> and he has even less money somehow than he had before. But he's a professional, goddamned comedian. And you're going to like him. Give it up for Mr. Jeff Bailey. I'm a professional, that's right. I was just shooting meth into my dick back there. I'm a professional. Hey, uh, thanks for coming out. That's swell of all of you. Uh, you didn't have to. You're on Farmington Road. Where dreams come true? You could have went to the Pulse or something. This guy asked me one time, he was like, hey, is the uh, Pulse a classy place? It's like, I don't know, have you fucking looked at it recently? What are we doing here? What's going on? That's not a place you leave with a tale of classiness. That's the kind of place you leave and you're like, yeah, I took my grandpa there and he got pink eye and a yeast infection in his mouth. <laughs> Apparently one of the strippers queefed meth in his face. Classy on her part. I, uh, as he said, my name's uh, Jeff Bailey, and uh, I just found out recently there's another Jeff Bailey in Peoria. How about that? He's a 38-year-old sex offender. <laughs> true. <laughs> totally true. He's on the list. Look him up. Jeff L. Bailey. He's there, man. And my friend was like, oh, that sucks. He's like, what if, uh, what if people confuse you two? <laughs> well, I don't think people are going to confuse us, because like, I'll be the Jeff Bailey that's like, not fucking a kid. If that, I'll be that one. So if you see uh, me and I'm not fucking a kid, game on. Talk to me. I'm nice. I'm super nice. And look out for that guy because he's out there. That's no good. I do hope he gets. Uh, I hope he gets confused for me though a lot. So people are like, "Hey, aren't you that shitty comedian from the jukebox?" And he has to be like, "No, I'm the pedophile from his hilarious joke." God damn it. This is the worst. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, listen, gang, I know I look like a school shooter who got high <laughs> and forgot to do that. I get it. You pegged me. I, uh, I am a stoner. I, I like smoking weed, and if you're still against weed, uh, fuck you. <laughs> you're an asshole, and no one needs that. No one likes you. I'm here to tell you that. I saw my favorite anti-pot campaign, and what it was was it's just a kid, and he's like, uh, he's like this, and above him it says, I tried pot once, and now I'm gay. <laughs> and that happened. What? Because he wasn't been there. You take a couple bong rips with your buddies, you're like, dude, whoop. hey, take out your dick. Ooh, oh. ah. I didn't even like dicks, mostly. That's weird. I just wanted a dick right then. Yeah, uh, this is a weird thing with uh, pot converging with new technology. It was uh, I was driving around getting high with my friends. Don't worry about that. We're safe. And uh, my phone went off, and it was a fucking Amber Alert. It's an Amber Alert on my phone with his license plate. Like I'm supposed to go fucking look for. I'm high. I'm like the worst person to look for your kid. <laughs> it's the worst idea ever. If you just. That's a shitty tactic to get your kid back, is just hope for like a text through a stoner, like, I don't know, maybe he'll find something out, like, no. <laughs> and are the police okay with that? If just a bunch of dumb fucks like me walk into the station, like, hey, Sarge, I got your text, got here as soon as I could. Uh, sorry, I was ripping bowls and listening to Rush. Is there a kid missing? This seems intense. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> let's, let's, let's find this kid, right? No? Man, oh man. Yeah. I, uh, this is a weird thing that happened. Is, uh, my ex girlfriend, uh, this is the weirdest thing I've ever had anyone say to me, I think. Uh, I went to go get a pizza one time, and before I left, she goes, Don't fuck anyone on the way to Pizza Hut. <laughs> Let me set that up first by saying, I hadn't fucked a bunch of people on the way to Pizza Hut to where that was like an issue, where she was like, I know you and going to Pizza Hut and fucking people, not this time. She just acted like that was my whole day. Like, I just left, and girls were, like, popping out of bushes, I guess. Like, Jeff, we want to blow you. And I'm like, I'm just trying to go to Pizza Hut. God damn it. 
I, uh, I saw my, I, I was watching a movie the other day, uh, American History X. Anyone want to watch that? It's a good movie. I, I thought I noticed uh, a writing error in it. Uh, there's a scene, if you haven't seen the movie, it's a, these white power kids. And there's a scene in the movie where they play a bunch of black dudes in basketball and they win. <laughs> what? And I was like, that's gotta be an error. And I was like, holy shit, that's how racist they are. They're so racist, they got good at basketball. <laughs> that's fucking insane. You bettered yourself as a human out of hatred. That's fucked up. You see a white dude who's really good at basketball, get the fuck out of there. Just leave. Yep. I, uh, this is, well, I'll, t I'll tell you this. I'll leave you, leave you with this one. Uh, I was just hanging out with my girlfriend today before uh, the show, and I told her, uh, I was like, hey, I'm going to give you the big dick tonight. You know what I'm talking about? This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> right? You know the hardest part about giving your girlfriend the big dick? Is waiting for the dude with the big dick to get there. It's like, where is this guy? <laughs> He's hours away. I, uh, I was watching uh, the Science Channel, though, before I came here, and they have my favorite thing, these shows that's like how it's made, how they make it, shit like that. And uh, yeah, no, they're great. They're awesome. And the weird thing about it is that they have this weird like analogy kind of comparison system. I'll give you an example. They'll be like, the people at Kraft make enough macaroni in one year to stretch around the moon 87 times. <laughs> what? What just happened? Who needs that? Who can't just hear numbers and be okay with that? Who's out there like, yeah, I get that you make 500,000 tons of macaroni in a year, but what, what the fuck is that? Give us some fucking moon circumference. What are you even talking about? <laughs> what? It's crazy. You can't just fucking hear numbers and be all right with that, science man. Fuck you. <laughs> yep. I, uh, I'll leave you with this. I don't know <laughs> when Ouija boards uh, became evil, but they are. People think they're evil now, and it's because of movies and shit. And uh, the Parker brothers made the Ouija board. Did you know that? So I don't know if they had like a meeting and they were like, hey, I want to make Monopoly and Sorry in a game that unlocks the gates of hell. <laughs> but uh, the reason I'm telling you this is uh, there is a, a Christian minister and uh, he was really against gay people and really against drugs. And he got caught fucking a guy and doing drugs. And his, his logic, for this, his reasoning for this was that he was playing with a Ouija board and he was possessed by a demon. What? Now, I'm, I love horror movies. I've seen every horror movie. That never happens. Where, like, a demon comes by and just gives you drugs and makes you do gay shit. Like, that's never happened. Where it's like, oh, my God, are you all right? You just got possessed by a demon. Like, no, I just made me do drugs and suck a bunch of dicks. It was awful. Oh, my God. All right, you guys have been awesome. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen from Metamora, Illinois, that is Jeff Bailey. How Jeff Bailey from Metamora. He was never on the football team because he's a skinny little pussy. But he's from Metamora. Did you guys hear this story?